welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and today we're going to finish up the gear making. Uh, the whole job was just too much for one video so I'm squeezing it into two and uh, that's what we're here for. We're going to make a gear so let's, let's just get after it. Okay, so before we get started, we probably ought to review what we've got. And these are formulas I got mostly from uh, Mr. Pete, but I also looked them up on the uh, little gear sheet there. So we're going to figure the, the pitch of a 40 tooth gear, and that would be the number of teeth plus 2 over the diameter. All right, so we got 40 plus 2 teeth over 2.625 comes out exactly 16 alright so if the tooth depth for that should be 0 0.1348 and I got that somewhere else I don't know where uh, we'll, we'll get into that further I think over here move this over alright so this is a check to find out if I did the math right the diameter is equal to the number of teeth over P so I run it through it and I get the diameter 2.625 so that tells me that my math must have been right All right, now this was the other Mr. Peep formula that was in a different uh, calculation and this is calculating the whole depth and so it, it tells me the OD of the thing is N plus 2 over P or or the diametral pitch is N over uh, D but it, we're not going to worry about that up there I, I got kind of confused with that anyway to find the whole depth of cut we got 2.157 over the pitch which is 16 and uh, it comes out to 0 0.1348 alright so that that looks right that came out pretty close to the spreadsheet here which is I copied Keith Rucker's spreadsheet and I don't know what here you can see what he put in each one of these cells the calculation he put in there but I don't know what he put in there and so I I fiddled around with the numbers until I found the right combination of things to to put in there and came up with the same answer he got and this is over here just a little table of backlash for different uh, pitches and a backlash for a pitch of 14 and a half is three thousandths and so that's really what I've got in here three thousandths and I should have put three over here but this didn't do any calculation this is just the the text part the formulas are inside here so using these formulas I came up with pretty much the same answer as this one except for an extra two thousandths on this one okay and the extra two thousands here was uh, from uh, backlash which I don't think was calculated in Mr. Pete's formula and so of course we know this is our our gear blank it's three eighth inch wide here and a half inch down here on the hub got a three sixties keyway in it in fact it's got two of them Although the little bushing it's running on doesn't have any keys in it, it's just round. Okay, here's where we find the center, how far, once I bring the gear down on top of the uh, mandrel, how far I've got to go down to get the center. And uh, that's not too bad there. Okay, and I measured all that stuff at the appropriate time. All right, so the indexing here, my my rotary table is 90 turns, I mean 90 cranks for a full turn. So I've got 90 over 40 and came out with a decimal, which is not helpful. So I put 90 over 40, which comes up to 9 fourths, which really is the same thing as that. But down here we see we got 2 and a quarter is 2 plus 28 fourths is uh, 7 more turns. So... It, uh, what I want to do is make two turns and seven holes and to back that up I've got this little table that came with uh, 
the rotary table, a table with a table, and I'm going to try to zoom in on it here. And it says down here at the bottom, we'll look at that, that uh, the A plate has got 26 and 28 and so on. If you take the A plate, and we'll come back up here, I think A is right. There we go in here with the number of teeth, and using the A plate, I'll zoom in on that even, even closer. Whoa, too far. Okay, I think you can see that. Now you can see that uh, with with using 40 teeth with the A plate that starts with tw that has 28 holes in it, it tells me I need to do two and seven 28 of a turn, which is two turns and seven holes. So there you are. So I figure I've got that part calculated right and of course I already show, showed you that stuff there that those cutters are done backwards these are just the uh, tables and calculations so we will now get this uh, get this piece set up over there and then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll we'll be in the midst of it all right now then we'll zoom in on this dial indicator which could take some zooming, but keeping in mind that this mandrel is two thousandths bigger on this end than it is on the end I'm starting at, so I should show a two thousandths difference from one end to the other. That looks like that's pretty near to two thousandths. I don't get any closer to that clamp because it'll just hit my my dial. But that's that ought to be pretty well straight across. So my gear ought to cut pretty well straight across. I'll make a few more changes now because I don't have the gear on there, and I need to make that a little more solid. Sometimes it's better not to copy the other guy's work adding in the thickness of this and that and subtracting it over there all I need to do is I basically come down and touch that uh, gear blank calculate the thickness of this and that and the gear blank I don't need to know how big the mandrel is at all so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to bring this guy down just to, just to touch the gear that looks like it just touches and I'll prove it with a piece of paper here in a minute. Uh, then I will move out of the way and take the thickness of the gear and and the thickness of the you know the diameter of the blank, and we'll figure out where I need to move down to be on the center. I think that'd be a lot better. But I'm going to move the camera in the midst of all that. Okay, so I brought the gear cutter in just enough to touch, make a little scratch. Everything is locked down good and tight, and so I'm going to feed it in. I figured 137 thousandths, I think it was. I'm going to feed it in, say, about maybe a hundred thousandths, uh, maybe somewhere in there. And we'll make all the cuts around it, and then we'll come back and cut to full depth. So I guess well, maybe a hundred and ten thousandths couldn't hurt anything. We'll give that a shot. Uh, make sure this is all really good, set for zero. Alright, that's 112 thousandths, that's pretty close to 110. Alright, so, got all the quadrants set, the holes are set we're going to start cutting the gear and this this stupid mill makes a lot of noise because this plastic cover on the top of it if I have it down it just booms and rattles I think I'll open it up i to cut down the noise some faster than I want to move, for sure. That's probably much 
better speed. I think I can handle it going that fast, but um, I couldn't handle what I started with. Oh, wait, wait. I haven't lashed this thing down here. That'd burn it. I'll uh, <laughs> get right back. Okay, I stuck the paper towel in real tight so that uh, it shouldn't move now. Back to it. really impressed with my mandrel for the, I mean my arbor for the uh, cutter. Not at all. It's okay for a hole saw, but it doesn't look to me like it runs true enough for a gear cutter. guys will get to see when I get all the way around the gear. I know you're just watching me run back and forth through there. Now that might be a little boring. Alright, unless I miss my guess, this is going to be the last tooth. Alright, here we go. hope I don't wind up with one skinny tooth. I did see several things though. Uh, the next time I cut a gear, I'll, I'll either have made this arbor fit better, or I'll have bought a factory made one. 
and I'll have a whole lot better part to match that dove down in place. Let's see what we got here in just a minute. I'll let it cut right on through there. Can we get it clear and we can see the hole too? Okay, we need to find my brush. Well, I'm not sure about the tooth, but you guys make up your mind as to whether I've got a skinny tooth or not. Come on, focus. Focus. Well, yeah, need to back it up a little. I can't tell for sure from here, but I think they're all they're all okay. I'm not sure if that's a skinny gear or not, but I'm going to go all the way around again, cutting it all the way to depth, and then when I get back, I'll show you what uh, what I came out with, and we'll decide then. I'm going to mark the little bugger so I know what tooth I started on, what tooth I ended on. And so, take a sip of your coffee and I'll be right back. Alright, so here's the gear that I've just about finished making. Here's the gear that I was copying. I didn't think it had any keys in the keyways, but here's the little bushing and it does have the built-in keys. So, I hope we can see it. It's got the built-in keys there. So I'm going to have to... Uh, cut keyways in this thing which will just be another part of the project but once I line them up they they look pretty much the same to me so and I didn't find any gear teeth that were smaller than the others no skinny one so I guess I uh, I guess I can cut a gear now then we'll chuck this up in the uh, in the lathe and I'll cut a cut the keyways if I can it's going to be a hard job but we'll see just to compare them I took these guys and, uh, and I measured through here like this with uh, and I'm setting about even it's hard to get it just right that's 8035 some more in there this guy here 0.811 so there 0 0.800 0.8025 I think you can see that um, not an exact way of doing it but if you wiggle them around there they're within about a thousandth or so and I know that the hole in this one is worn about two thousandths bigger than the hole in here so that would uh, you know that would affect the, the measurement somewhat so okay let's get on with trying to set up to cut the keyways Alright, so many of you people that didn't watch me build this may be wondering just what the heck is this Rube Goldberg thing I've got here. Well, I don't know if you can see it all now, but what its purpose is, is to cut keyways by running a tool in and out of there. And I've got a little piece of... Uh, 3 16th tool steel. The only thing is I've got to cut that end I think a little better. 
so that it'll actually cut three sixteenths of an inch. I might even have to go buy another piece if I don't have more of this. I've probably got enough there to make the job though. I'll just have to square it off. And uh, I've carried the boss lady all over town today. And I've worked on this today. And I'm running out of gas. So I'm going to call her today and start this tomorrow. Not that you'll notice, but uh, anyway, when I come back, it'll be tomorrow or some other day. All right, the way this is going to work is I'm going to run the tool steel in there. And it's going to cut out a little bit. And then I'll just run it back and forth until I've got the depth of uh, cut that I need. The, the little piece of tool steel is in there is 3 16 Okay, so we'll bring her back until it starts to touch. Alright, and we'll do this just right on down the road, over and over. I don't know if you can see a little groove forming there or not. That should uh, that should do the job like that. If you look carefully, I think you can see the the slot that's starting to form in there. And what I have to do is just a, a whole lot of back and forth with this lever until I get it cut to the right depth. Probably if I were to move in closer that uh, there wouldn't be so much spring in the in the little you know rod there that is, is what I have but then you couldn't see it if I were to get any closer once once we've done the notch on this side I'll do the one on the other side and I'm going to do the most of this off camera. The other side I'll do completely off camera, but I believe I believe you can see the notch that's forming in there already. And that's a 3 16 and it's going to fit a 3 16 key. Alright, I'm going to be back when things are a little more done. All right, <clears throat> we're handheld here for a second, so you can see the index holes in this gear. There's 60 holes, and I've marked it on one side at 30 and on the other side at 30. And now I'll just pull this little pin right here and rotate it around to the other side, and we'll cut the uh, cut the keyway on the other side of the gear. Sorry about all the handheld. All right, so there is the keyway that I cut the first one, and it's hard to get light in it, but we'll cut one on the other side now, and then we'll try the bushing to see if it fits. Well, using a round tool bit for cutting, that wasn't the perfect thing to do, because I had a hard time getting the little blade just exactly straight so I did have to do a little cheating which was at one point go through and sort of just drive the square key through it to kind of clean up where it wasn't right but now I've got uh, a key way through there and unless I get this thing full of chips it comes it slides pretty easy which I just just got it full of chips just then but anyway the bushing fits so I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on a lathe and see if it tears everything up or, or what it does all right you can see my key pretty good because it's a different color there we go anyway So there you are. Hmm. I didn't cut as 
nice looking the gear or as precise the gear as Randy Richard would have but I did cut my first gear and it works and it fits of course all this leaves me with a lot of loose ends to tie up number one I gotta figure out why it was that my uh, gear cutter seemed to wobble when I first made the arbor I put it on there and it run just as straight as an arrow and this time I put it on there and it was wobbling so I, maybe I got some chips under it I don't know Randy Richard wouldn't have, wouldn't have used it there he had stopped but I didn't stop at that point I went ahead I was too eager to make a gear you know and so I went ahead and used it and lucky for me that uh, my dog wasn't real tight in the slot so it would kind of wobble back and forth there and uh, with, with the gear cutter and and I guess let the let the cutter have room in the in the gear so but anyway that's uh, that's a loose end to tie up and this is a loose end to tie up this is the end off of my little keyway cutter not the one I used this then one that hadn't been used yet and I, I can see that what I need to do is to cut her off here thread this end and then slot it so that a square key a square cutter will fit in there and then screw this end back down of course I'll have to thread it to or get a nut you know and tighten it down so that I'm using a, a square cutter it's a lot easier to make the right width hole with a square one than with a round one just because it's hard for me to grind it dead on in the middle and then set it in the hole where it's you know exactly straight on the hole I wasn't very successful at either one of those things so I had to kind of like I say I had to cheat on the key there and push the uh, the square key uh, uh, through it well actually the square tool steel through it and I just sort of hand cut it there until it until the bottom of it leveled off the right way you know so anyway it uh, it's on there and it it moved just like the original one did, you know, it's got a little slack, and now got it done. Look at that. So I guess I'm going to call this a, a lesson that worked out okay. I know if I sent this to the inspection shop at the gear factory, it'd come out in the scrap bucket, but uh, it does work. It, it looks to me like it's not wobbling or or running out or anything like that it's just on there and working away so next time I need a gear I don't know where I can do it and next time I'll make sure the mandrel is is not you know not cause me a problem that the gear cutter works in a good circle well I guess it's time to see if old Bubba is around or maybe Daisy we'll see well there's the cutter with the key removed. I think the key is binding the cutter a little bit, so I'm going to file it some and then put it back in there and see what it looks like then. That looks plenty smooth right there. Now there you are, just a tiny bit of filing on the key and all of a sudden things are looking pretty good. Ah, oh well, so that's that's straightened out. So now I don't have to buy that expensive arbor. Alright, like I said, we'll see if Bub is around. And if he's not, well, I don't know. Okay, I know somebody's going to want to know what did that th was that thing that you cut the keyway with. Several videos back, probably a year ago, uh, at least, I cast a great big chunk of aluminum in, inside of a four by four piece of tubing something I learned from uh, Rob you know on the Xanadu channel down in Australia he he got me to thinking about it because he was casting aluminum in, in pipe and conduit and stuff anyway this guy here I'm going to turn this little viewfinder around so I can see if I'm what we got here is the end <clears throat> this is the holder tools it's just threaded on there and what it's got is a set screw and a little tool bit there ground to whatever size you want this one was the 3 16th and you can see it wasn't perfectly straight in there 
I'm going to have to make these little ends where they're slotted and use nothing but square bits, which is something I'll do on the side here for long after after a couple other things are squared away. And this linkage here, this is copied after the lead loadmaster. I've copied it several times. This goes for where your compound rest goes. And uh, these little guys here, they they latch down to pull it up tight with these screws, or wing nuts. I don't know what I'm talking about today. And anyway, that's that's my keyway cutter. That keeps me from having to buy such thing, nice things as uh, brooches and such. Although they would do a better job and work a lot quicker. <laughs> but I'm going to improve the way that works. I'm going to put square tools in it. <clears throat> That'll make it uh, a whole bunch better just right there. Here a while back, uh, Bubba got mugged. He he went on a visit trip there. I think he had got a, a truck driving job or something wound up up in New York City, you know. And uh, he was walking down the street, and these three guys jumped out and to, you know, told him, Get, give me your money. And, and Bubba fought like a madman for about five minutes, but, you know, it was three of them. And after a while, I finally got him down on the ground and pulled out his, his billfold, you know, and this, this one hold up guy looks in there and says, hey, there ain't nothing but a $10 bill in here. He says, you dummy, you fought that hard for $10? And, and Bubba says, no, no, not really. He says, I thought y'all was going for the $100 bill in my boot. Sometimes you can give out too much information. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, you all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.